بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم ایوری ون گڈ ٹو سی یو اگین ان آر لاسٹ سیشن وی آر بیسکلی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دی ڈفرینٹ تھیوریز آف کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ وی سو دیٹ دے آر ایٹ ڈفرینٹ ٹائپ آف تھیوریز اینڈ ڈیفینیٹلی ان ایچ تھیوری دیر آر مینی ڈفرینٹ ایلیمنٹس دیر ڈفرینٹ ویریبلس اینڈ موسٹ امپورٹنٹلی دیر از اے ڈفرینٹ ٹیکسچر اینڈ کانٹیکچولائزیشن بیسڈ اپان دی کنٹری اور دی ریجن ان وچ دیٹ کارپوریٹ گورننس تھیوری از بینگ پریکٹسڈ and the most important thing which we looked at in the last session was that uh, theories are not followed in isolation but actually they tend to overlap and many a times they tend to create an amalgamation theory of corporate governance so today ladies and gentlemen we are going to be talking about one of the very important and very fundamental theories and that is the agency theory now when we look at the agency theory it can be traced back to the globally renowned and historically prominent uh, economist and that was Adam Smith who identified an agency as a problem. Now the fundamental theoretical basis of corporate governance is agency costs and when we look at this then a very important phenomena tends to emerge and that is called agency problem. So what is agency problem? Agency problem is the mismatch of objectives between owners who are called the principals and the management who are called agents. Now, this mismatch can many a times lead to uh, the uh, bankruptcy of a particular organization. It can lead to its annihilation. It can lead to its elimination. It can lead to its scaling down below economies of scale. Now, this mismatch is a mismatch between the principals who are the shareholders and the management who is the agency working on behalf of the different shareholders and that leads to the agency problem. Now the cost incurred to do away or to bear uh, the differences or the agency problem is called the agency cost. Now when we are looking at the agency cost then definitely if there is a problem, there is a conflict. Uh, there is a misunderstanding or there is something which leads to a stalemate, which leads to stagnation, then definitely there is a huge cost involved in all of this and that is called the agency cost. So uh, it is very important that uh, the management and the shareholders and the board, they work hand in hand in tandem with each other or otherwise it could lead to an agency problem which would definitely have agency costs and those costs sometimes can be phenomenal and very deadly because it can lead to the closure of the company. Therefore, having a congenial and comfortable, healthy, positive relationship between the management who are the agency and the shareholders who are the very foundation and principles of the organization, that is extremely important. And whenever there is a mismatch, they always are problems. Now, When we are talking about the agency theory, in the modern corporation, managerial actions depart from those required to maximize stakeholder returns. Now, a very important thing is, is that there is an invisible line that in the optimization or in the maximization of profits, the agency, which in this context are the management, they do not start trampling on value systems. They do not start sacrileging on the different uh, elements of success within the organization. They do not get involved in such activities which would lead to the immoral labeling of the organization. And they are above board of being sensitized or being encrypted with the negative tendencies of management to optimize the profit. So that again is a very, very important aspect. We talk about agency loss. It is the extent to which returns to the residual claimants. The owners fall below what they would be if the principals, the owners themselves, exercise direct control of the corporation. So when we are looking at the agency loss, then there is this possibility that if the shareholders take direct management of the organization, then maybe they would not have faced so many losses. And when we tend to calculate that, that becomes the agency loss. In totality. The agency theory specifies mechanisms which reduces the agency loss. These include 
incentive schemes to, for managers, which reward them financially for maximizing the shareholder interest. So again, to ensure that there is no corruption, that there, is, there are no shortcuts, and to ensure uh, a healthy, positive, constructive environment, uh, different incentive schemes can be given to the employees, so they do not have to resort in negative uh, activities, which would eventually have a negative impact on the organization. So uh, when we're talking about uh, the, the problems with agency theory, then a fair and accurate financial disclosures is very important. The quality and independence of statutory auditors, preparation of the accounts by management, scrutinization of accounts by the auditors, transparency discouraging value destroying deviant behavior and audit accounts to all shareholders. So these are certain things which can ensure that the overall structure of the organization is constructive. But again, we have to look at that, that it is easier said than done. And in real life, there are many implications and many problems and many connotations which have to be assimilated, which have to be researched and then based upon that assimilation and that research, customized uh, solutions and customized actions can be developed for the betterment of the organization, which is extremely important in corporate governance. Now, another thing is having an efficient and independent board of directors. And when that is not around, that tends to cascade a lot of the complications and would lead to a lot of financial loss. Now, when we're talking about an independent board, then a joint stock company is owned by the shareholders, appointment of directors by the shareholders, directors are fiduciaries of the shareholders, independence during the determination of the composition of the board. So all of these things would lead to a higher efficiency level and then the creation of committees and subcommittees and not only uh, to create the role of uh, what we call committees and subcommittees, but to ensure that the committees and subcommittees are effectively working for the betterment of the organization becomes a primary responsibility of the uh, agents and the agency who are the management of that particular corporation. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you so much. We will be moving on to our next session, which will again talk about a different uh, theory of corporate governance. Thank you so much.